Hey everybody, it's Deb Hastings with Primetime Beauty News located near Fort Worth, Texas. I'm a President's Club member and a Silver Ambassador with Avon. And I am doing a video series working in Canva. Okay, so I'm going to take some raw images from either stock photos or photos that are within our e-store or the Avon Now office or the brochure or taking our own photos. We're going to take those photos and we're going to bring them into Canva and create graphics together. So what I'm going to do, though, is I am going to select a graphic posting that I have done and then I'm going to break it all the way down to the bare bones and build it up step by step for you to show you how I got that look okay and my thinking behind it and um, so I'm not going to go into some real basic stuff um, because I know there's some videos out there and some of you have already started using Canva a little bit so some steps I'll probably bypass uh, getting graphic postings or, or raw images you know, you can go to the e-store and you can right click on them and say, save this image to and save it to your desktop. And then you can upload it into Canva so you have that image, okay? And you can do that with any image within your e-store. A lot of our products have several other images along with the primary image. You can use any of those. If you've used Snippet in Windows, you can snip a picture within your Avon Now or one of your brochures to get a different type of customized look or even off of the emails. Wherever you can get some good images, that's where you can what you can do. You can either snip it or save the image to your desktop and then upload it into Canva so you're storing it in Canva. Okay, so without any more delays, let's just go ahead and get started. So to my left here is a graphic posting for Isanox Night Cream and Rejuvenating Serum. This is not a very difficult posting. It's actually quite simple, but it has a custom look. So we're going to break this one down to the beginning and build it back up. So let's get started. Okay, so let's go over the screen real quick. Below me is the uh, the graphic that we're going to be creating. It'll be on each slide so you can see what the finished product looks like upon with each lesson. To the left of me is the screenshot of the lesson which is going to be in Canva and below it will be a tip box where I will write something really short that's relevant to that particular step in the process okay so without further ado let's just get started so this is what Canva looks like when you first log into it I'm not going to go over the different elements because if you've been in Canva this looks very familiar to you Jennifer Francis has a wonderful video that goes over the the basic elements here so um, between her video and being in there this should look again very familiar so what we're going to do for this post is we're going to select Instagram post okay this measures 1080 by 1080 pixels so it's a perfect square it's perfect for Instagram but I'm going to tell you you can go ahead and post it to Facebook Pinterest uh, Twitter and Instagram, of course. I a lot of my postings on Facebook are with this size, and it works just fine. Okay, so when you select the Instagram post, this is what you're going to see. You're going to be taken to the studio, so it's going to be a big white square. All right. So I'm assuming that you have uploaded your raw images, and in this case, you would just go to the folder where you're keeping those raw images. You could also use stock photos or you can choose an element or a background color. For this particular post, I am leaving it white because I want to create a darker border going around it. So I'm going to leave the background white and go directly to my folder where all of my images are located. 
Okay, so here is my folder, and you can see I have an Isanox folder that has some raw images that I have already uploaded. There's going to be three that I'm going to work with. You can see the, the one that has the, the woman, and then there's the rejuvenation serum, and there's the night cream that we're going to use. Now, um, where did these images come from? Again, I got them from the e-store. I did a save image as, saved them on my desktop, uploaded them in here, and I keep my folders very organized and keep them done uh, organized by product. So all my Isanoc photos are together right in this folder. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to select the, my primary photo, which is the woman. I'm gonna, when I, when I click on that, it's gonna appear onto the white canvas and that is my primary focus okay so she is the background and she is going to be my my focal point in the beginning okay so you can see my image showed up and what i'm going to do next is i'm going to you you see the selectors going around the images you, you see them in all the corners and in the middle on the sides on the top the bottom and on each side using those selectors you can drag to make that image larger or smaller uh, it's always best to do it from the corners first that way as it gets larger or smaller it stays proportionate so I, I'm going to make it a little bit larger so I can work with it to get inspired on what my, what my background to exactly look like. Okay, so there's going to be a, a few steps in this step. Um, first of all, uh, I'm now looking at my background. And I've decided on this background to keep it white. Sometimes leaving the, the white space is good. Uh, because it gives an illusion of your photo floating, okay? I'm going to create a border so it looks like that border is floating in the white space, all right? So number one is the background, okay? I'm selecting white. Number two, you're going to select elements, okay? When you select the elements, there's going to be different categories coming up. So I'm going to go down to the shapes, and I'm going to select a square, because my overall shape of my post is a square, so I want it to complement. So I'm gonna select the square, and it'll show up onto the screen on top of my photo in a color that is very close and complementary to my photo. Now, I'm not gonna keep it this color, but it, that's what it is. So, and then I'm gonna move that square, and I'm gonna enlarge it to the size that I want it. And then number four, you select that and it'll bring up your color palette and it'll bring up <coughs> the color palette of your photo. I'm going to select the darkest color in the color palette to make my border. Okay, so you can see in this one, you can see the color palette. Um, it'll show the photo and it'll show the complementary colors for this particular photo. And since it's my focal point, I want my colors to be a part of that. Now, also you noticed when you click that element, it was on top of the photo. Now, towards the top right where I have a red arrow, <coughs> um, there's a, a word that says position. When you click that, you can take that image, you, you gotta make sure your image is selected, and you can bring it forward or backwards. So when you do that, you want to select backwards and it'll put that square behind your, your image there, okay? So now I'm going to select another element, another square. But this one is going to be white. So I've selected the dark brown, so I have a big dark brown square. And then I'm going to select white on top of that, position it underneath my image, and I'm going to make it bigger, but not as big as the dark brown one. When you do that, now it looks like there's a border that goes around the image. But that border looks like it's floating because it's not going all the way to the edge. It's inset from the edge a little bit. So you look like you have a floating square. Okay, so one more square. You're going to go to element, hit another square. And this time I'm going to make it a, 
a, a, a color that is closer to the picture because I want that background of the picture to blend in so it goes across the entire um, inside of that uh, other element. So as you can see here, um, it's more of that mauve pinkish tone one. So um, again, you're gonna move it to the corner, stretch it out, and it'll and then position it behind your image. So here you go. So this is what it looks like so far. So you've got three three elements that you put down on here. You've layered it, but with the layering, as you can see, you got that that darker frame. That's what it ended up looking like, but it looks like it's floating in the white space. And then you did the mauve to expand your image. So now your image looks larger, okay? So now we're ready to put in our other uh, images. Okay, so now we're going back to our folder. I'm gonna select the serum. It's the taller one, so because I'm want, I'm starting to frame everything. So I'm going to start with the serum, select it, and you know it's selected when when the image appears onto your canvas and it's got those dots going all the way around it. Okay, so when that is selected, you're going to go up to the top towards the left where it says effects, and you're going to select effect. And then a screen is gonna show up that says background remover. I have it uh, circled. While that image is selected, you're gonna click on background remover. And voila, this is what happens. I did it for both the night cream and the rejuvenating serum. And you can see that I've removed the white background. I made the, I changed the size of the image and I placed them onto the canvas where I want them. So now I've created actually two focal points. I have the woman in the background, so she's looking at us, so that there's something intense going on there. But then you have the, the two products, which, you, uh, which is a secondary focal point. So now we want to put some text on here. Now I have a couple of choices. I can put just, just put the text right onto the image. But sometimes I want those words to go on top of my image. When you have a case like that, you want to put an element underneath it. It, it puts a little bit more of an intentional uh, fact to it, and it makes it another focal point. It makes your text. You want it to be noticed. If you just put that text right on top of your image, it's going to blend in with your image, and it really won't stand out. Okay, And you don't always want to use a big, bold text, because depending on the product, and what message you're trying to send, you want a softer touch. So I went to the elements, I selected the square, and I've resized it to what I want. Now up in the right hand corner, you're gonna see a, looks like a checkerboard, I've circled it. And what that is is a transparency tool. So when you click on that, it will lighten up that square. So you can see the image underneath it a little bit, okay? Put that square into place and then write your text right on top. When you write your text on top, you can change the font style. You can change the size of the font. You can even change the spacing in between the lines or in between the letters, so vertically and horizontally. I had those circled at the top. So you can make it as pleasant or as complimentary to the to your subject matter as much as possible. Um, you don't always want big bold in your face. Sometimes you want something subtle. Sometimes you just want something complimentary, but you want it to stand out. So this actually creates a third focal point. So now you have the woman as a focal point, the product as a focal point, and now your text, your verbiage, that has become a focal point. So if you've seen some of my posting, you'll notice that I sometimes will put my photograph, my image onto the posting. So what I usually do, instead of just putting a square image, is that 
in the element section, you have what is called frames, okay? And these frames allow you to, you, you can put in a certain size, a certain shape, and then put your image and your image will get, go right into that frame and be the shape that you need it to be, okay? And the best thing to do <clears throat> is to experiment with it. Um, and see what works with you. They have a lot of different options in there. You have letters. You can use letters and numbers and put a background in there. You can, uh, all different shapes and sizes. You can do all sorts of things. It's, it's really a fun, fun tool to play around with. So in this particular instance, I used the circle and then I got my image and I'm putting it right into that circle. And then I always add a little bit of text, message me for details, your Avon rep, Deb. I change the font, change the size, change the spacing. I kind of turn it a little bit sideways so it's just not everything straight. And, and kind of, oh, and I always overlap it onto my image just a little bit. And it just, it makes a connection. It, it connects everything together when you do that. And if you don't want to put your picture on there, you can put your name, you can put your website. And I usually put that on and I'll put it on the side or I'll put it on the bottom in a complimentary color so it, you can read it, but it's not bold and it's very small. This is a good way to brand your, your uh, postings. And um, you hear Emily talk about it, you hear Jennifer talk about it, and, and you, this is very important. And it's something that I've had to learn over the past few months to do, and, and I've gotten much better at it. I'm still learning, but um, it's a way to put yourself into your postings and giving the message for your customers to call you about uh, this product because again, they are buying from you. They're not buying just from Avon. They're buying an Avon product, but they're buying from you. So you are the brand. Okay. So we want to put you in there somewhere. I think I forgot to mention it earlier, but you also want a title. So up towards the right or up towards the top in the right, you have the ability to name your image. So you want to make sure you name your image. Uh, but at this point we're done. So we have our image. It looks like our original image. And, um, but you know, you can decide at this point, you can use this size for multiple platforms, or you can choose the resize function and choose Facebook post. You can change Pinterest pin and it will change this graphic into the size that's optimum for those other platforms. Now you may have to rearrange some of the graphic elements because to change a square into a rectangle, that's gonna change some things. So you may need to, to change a few things. I have used this particular size across all the platforms and it's worked out just fine. Again, it's not optimum for the other platforms, but it does work. So if you don't wanna recreate and store a bunch of post, just keep the same one and post it to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. You can post directly from Canva or you can download it onto your computer and post it to your platforms. So here we go. Look at it. It's, it's final. It's done. It looks beautiful. It looks just like our original. We created the, recreated the graphic. And I hope that you found this informative and that it helped you with a design element or two. And again, if you liked this video, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. That's the only way I know if this is content that you like to see. And if you'd like to see more of these, again, hit that like button. And if you know of a... Uh, if you see a graphic posting that I've done that you'd like to see me recreate, message me and let me know. Uh, I'll, I'll work it in. So um, hope y'all learned lots. I had a lot of fun doing it and I'll be talking to you shortly. Bye.